What's going on guys? I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today we're talking about tri-squares. Uh, I have the 851 Woodpeckers, their precision woodworking square. We have the T200 from Drill Pro. I got this from banggood.com. And then I'm going to throw in my old Empire tri-square as much as I don't like this thing. I think there is some relative stuff to kind of go over with this thing. Um, mainly we're going to focus on these two though. And the point is, um, so often we get sticker shock when we see the high-end tools. And so we look for the same thing at a lower price. And a while back, you guys said that I could get the same thing as woodpeckers for a much lower price at banggood.com. My issue with that is that we don't have reviews that show us that it is actually the same thing, because I'm all about saving a buck. But we don't have anybody who actually has both of them and can show us what the differences are. So that's exactly what I want to do today. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one I think is better for you because we all have different ideas on what our tools should be. Um, but I am going to show you the differences, the fit, the finish, the functions, does it work, how well does it work, so on and so forth. Um, because it's not a video where I'm pushing one or the other, it doesn't matter if I bought these or if someone sent them to us, uh, but it gets brought up. So yes, Woodpeckers did send this out about a year ago. I've done a bunch of videos or it's been in videos and, and it does live on my bench. I use it all the time. Um, the T200 from banggood.com, this was sent to us as well. In fact, Banggood sent us out a whole bunch of stuff to do these reviews, which I'm very grateful for. Um, and then the Empire, this is, you know, we'll touch on it briefly, but this is something I bought years back. I used it for a long time until I replaced it with the 851. Um, I don't need all of these and I am very fond of my 851. I'm going to give away the Drill Pro. Now, there's a little uh, sort of a caveat to that. I'm not going to send this exact one. I'm going to get a hold of Drill Pro and see if they will send out a different one because there is a little manufacturing defect in this and I don't want to send out a tool that is not 100% up to par. Um, however, so leave a comment and you will be entered in for a random giveaway, but we are going to give this one out. And if you have any experience with this specific tool, hopefully, or this specific tool, hopefully, please leave a comment, share with the community. Or if you do have both of them, what was your experiences between the two? I think it's very helpful that we can all learn from each other with actual experiences instead of paid reviews underneath an, an Amazon ad or something. So let's dive into this, the 851, the T200, and like I said, we will touch on the Empire Tri-Square as well. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, I went over the clear style pocket rule and the Polini pocket rule. I just wanted to say for those of you that watched that video, I missed something. Sometimes you're so close to these things that you miss some things that are obvious. You guys had mentioned uh, taking the rule stop off and using it as sort of a kickstand. And you're absolutely right. I did not see it. But if you were to take this and drop this into that little groove, it'll sit down. It's not as solid, I don't think, as the Woodpecker's version, but it will work like this. And so if I bump the table now, it stays put much better than what I had shown in the video. That was completely my mistake. Like I say, sometimes you get so close to these things that you miss things. So that aside, let's jump into these tri-squares. Um, so I do want to touch basis on this and I want to explain why this was replaced to begin with. I personally feel this is a bad design. I've talked about this in videos before, so I will try to keep it uh, short, sweet and to the point. You'll notice that both of these tri-squares here, I can lay perfectly flat on here and they don't move. With this one, we have the handle that falls. Now that's very common for almost all tri-squares. However, I do feel that this lip is one of the greatest things to come to a tri-square probably ever. Uh, it just makes it so much more comfortable and easy to use. Now it's not to say you can't use a regular tri-square and I want to make sure that that is clear. But I had a lot of other issues with this, and that's why I think it's important to bring this up so that if you are in the market for a new square, maybe this will help you uh, with things to look out for. Uh, first of all, my graduations here. Um, by the way, this square is square because I always get this comment that if I just want a square, get a machine a square. I don't want just a square. I want a square that has some graduations. I want to be able to do some other things with it. Um, this square is square, so at its very basic job, it serves its purpose. However, it's a little cumbersome. You see my graduations here uh, go from zero at the edge of my material, which makes sense, and then it works its way up, so that is helpful. Uh, the problem is, is when I flip it over. I now go from eight at the edge here and work my way up. I don't know any situation where I've ever needed to work backwards, but 
I'm assuming that's what it's for. It, it just makes it sort of a pain. It makes it so that I can only use it really honestly in this direction for that intended purpose. The other thing is that because it doesn't come all the way down to the edge here, we don't have a graduation for inside measurement. So if I need to take this and put it inside of a, say, cabinet box, and I want to measure up to something to see where something's at, I can't do that with this particular tool. I'm, I'm off to getting another tool. And I like tools that are more multi-purpose so that I can have less tools to do my jobs. Uh, so those are two little gripes that I had about it. But the biggest one is how squirrely it is. Now this piece of plywood is pretty flat and true. And so I'm able to just throw this on here and draw a line. And that line is square. However, if I am in anything but perfect conditions, this square moves all over the place. So between the downward action here and this pivoting action here, in any kind of an awkward position, it's very difficult to, to get this thing to hold still. And it has let me down several times in the past where I didn't know until I went to go make the cut. And then of course I found out very quickly that this had shifted or moved on me at some point. And the biggest reason for that is this pivot point right here. So you have this little pivot point that this registers on, and that's because there's material missing, if you will, from right here. And it appears to be sort of a 45 degree cutout. And that's what people have said in the past. But if we check this to a known 45, you can, well, you can see right there already, but I'll draw a line just in case. It is not actually 45. Now, if that was intended to be a 45 degree reference, I would say, well, it's a little short. The problem with such a short reference is it's very easy to get it not registered correctly. That's why it's nice to have a longer uh, base here. But it's not even at 45 to begin with, which leads me back to my point. What is the reason for that? I still do not have a solid answer on that. So it's just a design feature that I don't particularly care for because I can't trust it. That's why I was so happy to upgrade to this. This really solved every issue that I had with this and I have never needed a different tri-square since upgrading. So I just wanted to throw this out there. Again, maybe it will help someone else uh, if you're struggling with the same thing or if you're in the market for a tri-square and maybe those are some features you may want to look at when you're buying your next tool. So let's focus on these ones. Again, we have the 851 here and we have the T200. Uh, one thing that I wanna say right off the bat is the T200 is metric. Um, so I looked for tools that were as close to the same thing, visually at least, as the Woodpecker's tools specifically, uh, because I really did want to get something that was quote the same, if not better, for less money, because that is really what the point of this whole comparison was about. Now, the tools on Banggood's website are mostly metric. I was able to score one or two things that had Imperial measurements. Now, for those of you that use metric, that's great. I happen to use Imperial, so this and all my other tools, for the most part, are in Imperial. So we're not gonna compare them as far as graduations go, which one's more precise or accurate. That has nothing to do with the tool itself. It could have some third-party graduations on here. As long as they work as intended, then it should be fine. Um, but you will see that they are relatively the same size. This is 200 millimeters. That is the sort of metric equivalent to eight inches in the tool world. Uh, real quick, I wanna talk about packaging. This is the packaging that this came in. You might be able to see the little imprint here. It came just like this in sort of this uh, bubble mailer. Um, I also got this in a big box with a whole bunch of stuff in it. And this was inside of there. It didn't come in any other separate box by itself. Uh, if you were to get this by itself, it may then come in another box, I would assume, uh, to protect it during shipping. But this is the package. I cut it open and this was the tool. With the Woodpecker's tools, as I'm sure everybody knows, um, this came in this case and then there was a box around it. Probably, if I'm guessing, similar to this. This is the one that the Delve Square came in. Um, so it did have a box around it, but this is what you get with the Woodpecker Square. Now, yes, this is a set. This is the six inch and then the eight inch. I had to look for this case just to show you guys for this video because these two tools don't live in here. They live on the benches uh, where I can use them. So 
I just wanted to let you guys know that this is a part of the packaging that comes with the woodpeckers. You have an acrylic stop here, so you can hang this up or whatever you want to do, and that sort of locks it in there so that it can't fall out. Um, if you were just to buy one by itself, you would still get a one inch thick MDF case that that could live in if you wanted. So you would still get the same thing. Um, as far as graduations, units of measure, again, this one only comes in the metric. This one you can get in the a metric flavor or in imperial. I don't believe they do a combo where you'd have metric on one side and imperial on the other. And that actually is a good thing because that would limit the use of the tool, but you can get imperial on both sides or you can get metric on both sides and there is a stainless option i believe uh, it's not exactly an option with this square i think they call it a different type of square it has a different number uh, but it is very similar only it has a stainless blade and i think there's a few more uh, features to it as well i don't have one to show you otherwise i would when we look at weight this one almost feels heavy compared to this one. And a lot of that has to do with how thin the blade is on this one and the stock overall. So this is about an inch or about an eighth of an inch thick. This is about a quarter of an inch thick, or actually this is a quarter of an inch, of an inch thick. Um, you can see that the stock on this one or the handle is much uh, shorter here. And it's actually much narrower also. This is three quarters of an inch thick, and I believe this is probably about a half. I haven't actually measured it because it's sort of irrelevant. Um, and then they're about the same height right here. And of course our blades are roughly the same height because one's metric and one's imperial. Now that being said, there's also these holes here that are all cut out. And then these holes, which I'll show you here in just a second, all of that material being eaten away makes for a very light tool. So if this is something that you're going to carry an apron or something, you would definitely have weight reduction when it comes to this one. This one would probably wear you out by the end of the day. Now, it's not to say that this isn't necessarily heavy. Um, I would say well, it's hard to tell with the difference in balance, but this is only a tad bit heavier maybe than this one. So just to give you an idea, this is a cast iron um, combination square. So just to kind of give you an idea for how heavy that one is. This one is very, very lightweight. Now looking at fit and finish wise, we have obviously the woodpeckers anodized red on this version uh, with our laser engraved markings. Now these markings are pretty thin. I'm not going to say they're unreasonably thin, but when I put my Shinwa ruler up against here, see if I can get it out of the light here. Um, they're right on par with that. Now, I know some people don't like really thin markings because it's hard to see. I will say, though, that the thinner the graduations and the thinner the writing device or knife or whatever it is, uh, the more precise you can be with things. But just be mindful, these are nice and thin. Eased edges around everywhere, no sharp corners or anything to worry about. Of course, we have this lip here. Um, I believe this is all milled from a billet block. So this is all CNC that makes it, does make it very accurate when it comes to the tolerances. Um, I don't have numbers on it. I will leave links to them, like I said before, if you want more information. Um, but we have a single blade that comes here and then goes down the center. So that, all that, that piece with the lip, and then this is all one piece. And then you have this cheek here and this cheek here, which are put on there. And then you have these two pins that are pressed in place. I have had this for about a year. I use it all the time. I have not dropped it, but I do use it all the time and it gets thrown on a bench. I don't exactly baby this, but I have no issues with anything here being sloppy or wiggling. I know sometimes when there's multiple parts, that can be a concern. It works just the way it did when I first got it. So in case anyone's interested about that. Um, hopefully I remember, I wanna talk about that blade thickness as we go here. Um, with the Drill Pro T200, um, same thing, we have sort of this, I'm assuming anodized finish. I don't have a lot of, uh, I don't have a lot of information as far as the manufacturing of this one goes, um, but it looks to be maybe uh, powder coated or, or anodized one way or another. There's a slight texture to it. It's not nearly as smooth. Um, however, our edges are all eased. Um, a few sharp corners here and there. I have a couple spots here, like here and here, that are fairly sharp. And sometimes that can be an issue when you're sliding it across here. I will say this one's smoother, but I've used this now for probably a couple weeks and I've, it's never gotten in my way. So you could also just kind of file that down or something if it was an issue. It's a little more grabby, but it's not that big of a deal. 
Um, we have our graduations here on the side, but what we don't have is any backfill. So you'll notice there's a T200 written here in white, but there's no backfill on this, which means it does make it harder to read. And that's the same on this side. I see some sort of uh, almost black that's in these, uh, in certain graduations here, uh, certain numbers, I do see sort of a black and I don't know if that was um, a flaw or if it was supposed to be backfilled and then it wasn't. I, I don't know. I don't have any information on this and this is the only one I have so I don't have a duplicate to compare it to. But uh, we do have the graduations there. Uh, one thing that I will tell you though, when we look at the difference between the two, on this one, because we have these holes here, um, our graduations on this side of our rule starts at zero at the edge here and it goes up to 170 millimeters. However, when you flip it over, this is where you get zero from the base and then all the way up. Now that's different than the woodpeckers. On the woodpeckers on the outside here, you go from zero to your eight inches. And then on the inside, you also have zero at the edge all the way up to roughly seven inches. That is the same when you flip it over. It is a mirror image of the other side. That means a tool like this, you're gonna be able to use in either position, the same. In this one, you're gonna to have to think about it before you use it. So when you're on this side, if I wanted a full from the base measurement to measure inside of something, I could then use this side just fine. But if I was looking this direction and I needed to turn it around, this scale here would be absolutely useless to me because it doesn't zero at the base. So again, just something to uh, note that there is a difference here. Um, also, if I was using this side and using the graduations here, which that's what they're intended for, that's fine. But again, when I flip it over, I won't be able to use this scale at all because now it's registering zero here and not at the side. Now, what you can do is use these holes. Now these holes, this is a metric version, of course. These holes are all spaced a millimeter apart, or at least I believe they are. I haven't tested all of them. So if you were to put your pencil into that hole, oh, I fell into something there, then you would be able to, in theory, draw a line at each one of those increments. I think I didn't have enough lead down here the first time. So as long as you know which unit of measure is which, then you'll be able to use these holes on this side. I'm hoping that that made sense. Now, one thing that I wanna talk about because really the base function of these tools is are they square? And I check square maybe different than you do, so you can take it for what it's worth. Um, I will take a known flat or straight or joint jointed edge on this side here. I'll put my square up against here and I'm just gonna draw a line just like that. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to bring it this way until I cover that line. By covering that line and going just a tick forward, I can actually see if there's a separation between those two lines and that'll tell me if I'm skewed one way or another. So we will draw a line here and that looks square. Hold on a minute. The other day, or yesterday actually, I did this several times and there was a couple times when it didn't register square. See, so this isn't registering square, although that line might just be a little thin. All right, we have that side, cover up the line. We have that side. Now that one actually looks a little bit square. So sometimes when I set this down, I'm not getting it square for some reason. I believe the inside, we'll scoot down to here. I believe the inside might be a different story. Okay, now that one's square on the inside. A, 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 a square should be square to the inside and the outside if it is designed to do said things. Um, so there's that one. If we look at the woodpeckers, Draw a line, cover the line. Okay, we're square on that one, obviously. And see, I had so much lead out over there, I actually broke it. 
and we're square on the inside. So this one um, is square, this one is square, although like I said, I have had situations where it for some reason hasn't been absolutely square each time that I put it down. And I haven't figured out what it is. I've looked to see if there's a little, you know, burr in here, some something from the manufacturing process, but I don't see it. Um, so I, I really don't have any more information other than that. One thing that I wanted to say about these graduations and the outside of the blade here. Um, well, actually two things. One, you know, I did talk about the thickness of it. This, the thicker your measuring device, tall wise here from the surface of this, the more uh, opportunity you have for what's called parallax. So if we take, um, I'm going to measure over two inches right there. Okay, we're just gonna say that that is two inches. When I lay this on here, and I look, we'll go this way, maybe it's easier for you guys to see. The way I, my eyesight is right now, I'm looking straight down over the top of this, and the two inch line that I drew, the reference here, matches up perfectly with this two inch graduation on the rule itself. However, if I'm gonna pull back here, and as I go, it looks like the two of them are separating from each other. And when I go all the way to here, it looks to me from this viewing angle that that mark is now a 16th over. That mark and this mark right this second are lining up because I'm viewing at it like that. That's parallax. Parallax doesn't usually happen when you're going forward or backwards because you can keep those in line. Now, where does that come into play uh, in a real world, world situation? Well, if I'm standing here and I wanna use this and I wanna go here and mark this at one inch, that's fine if I'm looking straight down. But what if I'm in a hurry or in an awkward angle and I can't see it perfectly well? I'm gonna be off on that measurement because the farther I go, the more that separates. That's that parallax. You want as thin as you can get if you can. With this, this is like eight tenths of a millimeter. And so this is basically right on top of my work. So this blade only being an eighth inch makes a huge difference. If let's say that I mark this at, I have no idea what that is, but I'm just gonna mark it here. That mark lines up with this mark right this second. And I have to go back to here to be a millimeter off. So before I was way down here. Now I know a millimeter and a 16th isn't the same thing, but I think you guys can understand what I'm getting at. So one thing to just maybe be mindful of, if that is a situation you are going to find yourself in quite a bit. Now one thing I wanna say about this one, um, I'm gonna see if hopefully this is gonna show up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a series of lines and I wanna see if we can zoom in here and you guys can see something. Hopefully we can zoom in and see, but there's all this dust here. That is all the pencil lead being ground off. And the reason is, is because the graduations on this side are much deeper than the graduations on this side. Um, I don't know, again, manufacturing process wise, I don't know that they're laser engraved. I don't know if this is cast. I feel like it is. I do see a mark right here that looks like a casting mark. And by the way, I don't know if this will show, but this is the defect in it. This is where there was a grinder that touched a little bit too um, too close and it ate away too much material. And so when you put this here, you might be able to see that it sort of twists as it rocks. And it also makes it impossible to check it for square right here. Anyways, so that's that defect that I was talking about in the beginning. But the graduations here are pretty deep but they're way deeper over here and it leaves for a big mess. So again, just something to be mindful for. On this side, it does it as well. Boy, I'm not having good luck here today. It does do it the same as that side, uh, just not as bad. But the reason is because these are so deep that they're actually encroaching onto the edge of our blade here. And what that's doing is grinding away my pencil lead. That's probably why it keeps breaking. Uh, if we were to use the woodpeckers, because the woodpeckers goes and makes a nice 90 degree corner at the face, we're not gonna have that nearly as much, if at all. And if I do get it, it's probably 
from the remnants still breaking off and fixing, uh, repairing the lead that's there already. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at tools like this. I think that that is about it. Again, because we have a much thicker base here, we're gonna be able to stand that up a little bit uh, more securely. Um, but other than that, I think, I mean, it's a tri-square. There's not a whole lot really to talk about. So other than that defect, this was the only thing, quote, wrong that I could find with this, which is why I don't wanna send this out. Oh, I do have one other thing now that I see it. I knew there was something else. Um, you see where we have this notch here. We also have this notch over here. If you were to look inside between these two cheeks into this center piece of aluminum here, you will see that it also has sort of a hooked effect. But the way that they designed it, they designed it with these cheeks and that hook so that they kind of cross paths and creates a square there. And the reason is, is so that I can get my pencil lead all the way in, into the inside of this and draw a line which is here. The difference here, they still have that, but the cheek doesn't come up as much. So you could probably see what's gonna happen already. I'm only good up to about here. I can't get it all the way to the edge here. So again, just something to be mindful, mindful of. If I was going to use this tool, what I would do to maybe kind of get around it if I needed to is either use it in this direction instead of this direction or if I absolutely had to use it this way, I would pull from this side, and I don't know, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this because my hand's gonna probably get in the way as usual, but if I was to pull up from this side, leave my pencil there, turn it around, and bring it back in, I could then continue that line and I should have a straight line uh, without picking my pencil up and putting it back down because of course every time you do that, you run the risk of missing your mark that you already had before. I think that's it. So that's the 851 and the T200. And of course we touched on the Empire, which I don't feel the need to bring back out here. Um, let me know if I missed something. I probably did. This is like the fourth time I've recorded this video and not been happy with it. Um, let me know if I missed something uh, or if there's something you need more clarification on and I'll try and do that. Uh, also, again, share your experiences with either one of these, please, and help the community out. Uh, like I said, there is that manufacturing defect, so I'm gonna get a hold of banggood.com and see if we can uh, have a new one shipped out. If not, I will buy one myself and ship it to you, uh, but leave a comment and that will be your entry uh, to win this one as well. So that being said, um, again, further in the series, we have the Delve Square uh, with uh, another one we got from banggood.com and the Milwaukee Trim Square. I've got saddle squares. We've got kerf makers. We're going to go over here real soon too. So in this whole series, there'll be a lot more of this. I know it runs on for a while, but there really is a lot of detail to be had when we're actually looking at two tools and our money is worth something. So why wouldn't we really need to dive in and see what it is we're actually buying? That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching as always, and we'll see you in the next video.